So welcome sa ating second service and the last week of our series entitled Homefront. And we've been talking about kung ano yung dapat na maging uh, ika nga uh, paraan natin o way natin to reach out to our families. We all know na importante ang pamilya natin, di po ba? How many people will say amen to that? Amen. Di ba? Importante pamilya natin. We love them. We care about them. At gusto natin na uh, silang lahat ay makasama natin. No? Not just in the church per se, okay? But more so in the life na ibinigay sa atin ng Panginoon. Okay? Gusto natin na makasama natin ang mga mahal natin sa buhay. Serving God, worshiping God, and all of that. Amen ba? Di ba? That's only right. So, we're talking about that at sinasabi natin, the first thing na sinabi ko sa inyo about this is that you are God's strategy to save your family. Okay? Now, I don't mean to say na parang ikaw lang lahat ang may responsibility, but I do mean to say na you play a very important role. Kasi kung ikaw, you call yourself a follower of Christ, di ba? Siyempre, yung family mo, whether you like it or not, nakatingin sa'yo. And they're asking a question <coughs> sa isip nila, uh, totoo ka ba? Okay? Are you the person who claims na talagang kilala mo si Lord? And that's a big burden, alam ko yun, di ba? But uh, nevertheless, we cannot escape it. Kasi kung tayo ay follower ni Christ, uh, by, by saying so, and maybe that's the reason why some people don't want to say so, ayaw nga sabihin followers sila. But once you say that to your family, once malaman nila, you know, sooner or later, malalaman nila yun. You go to church, di ba? So, malalaman nila you're a follower of Christ. Immediately, siyempre, nakatingin sila sa atin and they're asking the question, ito bang tao na to? Ito bang uh, kapatid, tatay ko, nanay ko, whatever, alright? Is this person ba mapagkakatiwalaan ba? Is this person real? No, di ba? Tinatanong nila yun. And of course, nandoon yung ano natin, pananagutan natin sa Panginoon to make sure na hindi tayo magiging cause o dahilan ng ikakatiso, no? stumbling block na mga mahal natin sa buhay. Even kung hindi man tayo mismo ang mag-share sa kanila, at least hindi tayo ang dahilan bakit tatanggihan nila ang Panginoon. Amen po ba? Okay? We want people to have a chance talaga to be able to uh, grapple with or struggle with the idea of the Lordship of Christ sa buhay nila. Personal decision yun eh. That's something we cannot really force them to do or to be, di ba? But nevertheless, wag tayo ang maging dahilan for them to say no to Jesus. Amen? Oy, wala nang ganyan. May marami-rami. Amen. Amen ba yun? Amen. Hindi ikaw yung dahilan. You know, that's what I'm saying. So, anyway. So, the second week, sabi ko, yung credibility natin can really influence our family. So, that's why we need to take care of that credibility. Ano yung credibility natin? Yung ating uh, character, yung ugali natin, di ba? Yung ating pananalita, you know, all of that. Uh, pati yung mga skills natin. I hope na may natututunan kayo rito sa RLCC in terms of yung mga practical na skills like how to relate with people, paano magpatawad, and all of that. Amen ba? May natututunan ba kayo sa RLCC in that regard? Taas sa kamay, may mga natututunan ako dito. Okay, good. So, thank you. Ha? Very encouraging yun. At least meron akong naitutulong sa inyo. But it's very important kasi sa practical na buhay, we need to have certain skills, you know? Kasi alam naman natin sa mundong kinagagalawa natin, hindi lahat ng tao mabait. ba? Kasama ka na ron. Amen? So, hindi lahat ng tao mabait. And we need to learn how to get along with others. And unfortunately, sa mundong ito, walang ganong klaseng wisdom. But God has wisdom for us. Okay? So, tinuturuan namin kinito sa church how you can practice more yung tinatawag nating life-giving relationships. Okay? So, I hope and pray na yung credibility natin ay hindi na babawasan bagkus na dadagdagan. Amen ba? <laughs> Amen. Alright. Are you with me? Okay. Sabi mo sa katawin mo, nandito ka ba? O, sagutin mo, wala ako dito. Sabi mo, <laughs> nakikita mo lang yung ko. Anyway, so yung credibility natin is so important. And that led us to the third thing na sinasabi ko, which is yung, even if you fail, uh, Christ will still prevail because we all know we all fail. Di ba? And I, I wanted to say then also last week that grace will still prevail. Di ba? Hindi lang basta Christ will prevail, grace will prevail. Di ba? When you are weak, then, di ba, sabi sa Bible, then you are strong. Di ba? Because the grace of God is more than sufficient. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Kasi kahit na gusto natin talaga maging mabuting tao, we all fail. Amen? Asa ka may, nagkakaroon ka ng failure. O just this week, ilan sa inyo, may nasabi ka, may nagawa ka na para nagsisisi ka. Okay, asa ka may. I thank you for your honesty. Yung hindi nagtaas, hindi kayo honest. Ha? Okay. But anyway, we do, we do this all the time. May nasabi ka, may nagawa ka, you know. Siguro nagdabog ka, nasabihan ka ng konti, nag, 
tampo tampo ka na, you know, and you walked out, or maybe you said something to a, a brother or a sister na kalamo wala lang yung pala yung moment of disproportionate influence pala yun, okay? Di ba? Yung mga nosebleed sa leta, moments of disproportionate influence. Yung mga pagkakataon na kala mo, simple lang, pero pag nagpakawala ka ng salita, ang laki pala ng epekto. Amen? We need to be the kind of people na pag dumating yung mga ganong pagkakataon, hindi natin mabubulilyasa yun. Amen ba? Alright? Kasi it would uh, happen talaga. To tell you frankly, habang ipag, ano ka, relate ka sa mga tao, there will be moments of disproportionate influence. Yung mga pagkakataon na what you say and what you do ay malaking influence. May mga moments na ganon. Ang tanong, will you be ready for that? Okay? So I hope that we're all growing. Now, however, this tong last natin na pag-uusapan today is something that I believe we also need to take into consideration. Okay? So pray with me. Let's all pray and ask the Lord that He will teach us today. Father, in Jesus' name, salamat po. So far, we are learning a lot about how we can become uh, really the key to our family's uh, salvation. And even though hindi kami personally maring mag-share sa kanila, but you are going to use us as part of the process. Panginoon, this morning as we come to the last uh, topic of this series, may you just open our hearts, O God, and speak to us and help us to know your will and purpose para tuloy-tuloy lang kami sa ministry namin, Panginoon, sa pamilya namin. Thank you, Lord. We pray this now in Jesus' name. Lahat ng sabi, Amen. amen. Alright, Amen. Well, this week, uh, or the past few days, uh, may mga nababalitaan tayo na mga tao na who are crossing the line of faith, you know? Two people, in fact, medyo prominent o sikat. Yung nasa kaliwa, si Hayden Ko. How I many of you have heard na naborn again si Hayden Ko? Okay? So, naborn again, na again, di ba? How many of you know Hayden Ko? Taas sa kamay. Alright. How many of you nakakita ng video niya? Okay, don't, wag na kayo magtaas sa kamay. Alright. But, <laughs> alam natin kung ano yung naging involvement niya and how he basically just uh, wasted all his opportunities. Na walang siya yung license niya, imagine. Na wala ka ng license bilang ng doktor. That would be traumatic, di ba? But anyway, so he found Christ. And what a joy it is to hear about such things. Huwag natin i-judge yun, ah. Amen? Amen. Di ba? Iba kasi sinasabi, hmm, kunyari lang yan para maka- maging artista siya ulit. Okay, let's not do that. Let's give, them, give him the benefit of doubt. Sa kanan naman, is maybe kilala niyo si Kuya Kim. All right. He just got baptized, you know, in the church. And praise the Lord kasi nagkaroon siya ng sakit and all of that. And, and we rejoice sa kanyang mga klaseng mga storya, yung mga kwentong ganyan. People crossing the line of faith. Finally, di ba? And I know a lot of people are praying that ah, this guy would come to uh, know Christ. And uh, ako rin, nagpe-pray ako, di ba? Di ba? So, wag yan, na, na born again. Ewan ko lang, siguro laking tuwa natin. But in, in the midst of that, you know, uh, we all know lahat tayo dito siguro, one way or the other, we can relate to the, to the reality na misan, Kahit anong gawin natin, kahit na, try na natin lahat, nagpapakabait na tayo, still minsan hindi pa rin nagwo-work. Okay? In fact, the question is, what if your family still rejects you and your faith? After all that you have done, okay? Nagpapakatino ka na, you know, uh, dati medyo parang pasaway ka, but now, by, by God's grace, nagiging matino na ang buhay mo, right? Pero still, yung pamilya mo, ganun pa rin. <laughs> na parang nire-reject pa rin nila o pasaway pa rin sila. Uh, noon siguro may dahilan sila. Dahil kasi nakikita ka nila, parang wala naman nagbabago sa'yo. Pero in, uh, as time uh, uh, goes by, nakikita naman nila nagbabago talaga yung life mo. And talaga naman sincere ka. You are doing your best to just follow the Lord, di ba? Pero is it true na minsan nakaka-frustrate talaga na parang kahit anong gabi mo, wala pa rin nangyayari. And when you hear about those stories, about Hayden Ko and uh, Kuya Kim or anybody else, Parang naiisip mo, sana pamilya ko rin. Diba? Kailan kaya sila ma- 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 makakakilala sa Panginoon? Diba? We all ask that question. And sometimes it's, it's taking too long. Siguro iba sa atin dito have been praying for a long time sa pamilya natin. We've been asking the Lord, please, yeah, touch mo yung tatay ko, magulang ko, nanay ko, touch mo yung asawa ko, you know, touch mo yung anak ko. And all of us have th- those kinds of ano, situations in life. Diba? And minsan nakaka-frustrate, lalo na pag masyadong matagal. Amen? And, and you are doing your very best talaga to, to, uh, to try to help them na sana ma-influensya mo sila. Pero it seems like parang nothing is working. And you're asking God, God, paano ba ito? Ang tagal-tagal na hanggang ngayon, tigas pa rin ang puso nila. Well, there, there is a guy in the Bible who probably, kilala niyo siya, I'm sure, pero hindi niyo alam siguro masyado yung background niya. His name is Timothy. Okay? 
So si Timothy is of course the protege of the Apostle Paul, you know. Siya yung talagang dinisciple ni Apostle Paul. And si Timothy of course is we all know na siya yung talagang you know, Christ-centered, devoted follower of Christ. But some people don't really know yung talagang full background niya. So, let me read this, 2 Timothy uh, chapter 1. Uh, let's read a f- f- few verses dito. Um, and then, let's look, look at the background of Timothy. Sabi niya, I thank God, whom I serve as my ancestors did, with a clear conscience, as night and day I constantly remember you in my prayers. So, this is the Apostle Paul, okay? Expressing yung kanyang ikanga pagmamahal sa kanyang disciple na si Timothy. At uh, talagang close na close sila, as you can see, from the words of Paul. Sabi niya, uh, recalling your tears, sabi niya ganun, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. By the way, yan yung klase ng relationship na talagang magre-resulta ng tinatawag na uh, life transference. You know? In other words, if you want to really disciple people, you've got to build relationships. Hindi talaga pwede yung parang dinadaan-daanan mo lang sila, kinakamusta mo, oh, kamusta ka na, mag-pray ka, you know, sa iwanan mo na. No? You have to really build relationships and that's why we're trying to tell everybody dito na uh, one of the best ways talaga for you to, to uh, disciple people is become a leader sa either a share group or a care group para nakafocus ka sa iilan kesa yung parang generic yung ministry mo. Diba? Well, focus on a few people, invest your life, Build relationships and you will see great results. Amen ba? Pero hindi yun ang topic natin. Let's move on, alright? So, sabi sa verse 5, I am reminded of your sincere faith. So, si Timothy was someone na hindi plastic. Amen? Si Timothy was someone na yung kanyang pagiging Christian ay talagang solid dyan. Wala kang masasabi. Mismo si Paul sabi niya, sincere faith. But notice what he says after that. Sabi niya, which first lived in your grandmother, Louis. Okay? Na, you know, bakit ganun ang pangalan? Hindi ko alam. Parang pangalan lalaki, pero grandmother, di ba? Lola Louis. Yun know, parang pangit pakinggan. But anyway, so yung lola niya apparently is also a parang, you know, devoted follower of Christ. Okay? Kasi doon daw niya nakuha yun. Tapos sabi nito, uh, and in your mother, Eunice. So may anak na pala si Kate, ano? Uh, and in your mother, Eunice. Okay. Joke lang, for some people, alam nila yung sinasabi ko. But yung daughters, huh? Okay. And I'm persuaded now lives in you also. Okay? So in other words, here's the wonderful thing about Timothy. Okay? Background ni Timothy. We all know Tim- Timothy is a devoted follower. Anong background niya? Yung nanay niya, okay? Was a malupit, you know, uh, malupit, cruel, hindi. Matinding mananampalataya, yung nanay niya. Okay? So, tapos yung lola niya. Wow! Di ba? So, yun, yun yung baganda. Pero, if you notice, and if you read carefully, and if you read the other texts like the book of Acts, Acts 16, you will notice there is a missing person. Yung tatay. And historically, you know, those who have studied, you know, the life of Timothy, uh, they, everybody, uh, unanimous to, they all say, now for some reason, yung tatay was never influenced by the gospel. Yung tatay ni Timothy was never, o yung asawa ni Eunice, okay, hindi na influensya. No? Even doon napapaligiran sila ng mga matitinding followers ni Christ. Si Louis, si Eunice, and then si Timothy. Now that's a fact, and that's a sad fact. Okay? Alam natin yun, di ba? We, we, we can be, oh, sa pamilya mo, tatlo kayo, wala kayong mananampalate, except yung tatay. Except yung nanay. O except yung magulang. Alright? Okay lang kung except yung aso. Okay lang yun, di ba? Pero ex- except yung mga tao na yun, sana iniisip mo, sana sila rin naman sumama sa amin. So, minsan nakakalukot, di ba? Especially if you're a young person, you're worshiping the Lord, nag-uusap ko sa palimbawa, sa takot sa pamilya, o kaya patatayuhin ko kayo, sabihin ko, lumapit kayo doon sa inyong kapamilya, yakapin nyo sila, tapos ikaw, young person ka, sino yan, yakapin ko, wala dito mami ko, daddy ko, di ba? O kaya, asawa mo, wala dito, ng mga oras na to, naghihimas ng manok somewhere, you know, nagsasabong, and you're, oh, no, iniisip mo, bakit wala dito yung asawa ko, di ba? So we all feel that way. And so ang tanong is, what, what do we do with that? Okay? Anong gagawin natin sa ganong klaseng sitwasyon? Amen? So, here's my, here's my message to you. Here's the, the message of the Lord sa ating lahat. What you need to do is this. You need to stay spiritually healthy regardless of your family. Stay spiritually healthy regardless of your family. Amen? I'm not talking about healthy lang, you know, malusog, daming kumain kanin, para kang 
Cargador, you know. I'm talking about spiritually healthy. In other words, the best way para makatulog ka sa pamilya mo is not by becoming an, ano, a person na parang nagiging pasaway din dahil pasaway ang pamilya mo. The, the best way para maging source ka ng, ng, ng blessing sa pamilya mo is to stay healthy yourself. Amen? Kahit nagwawala na lahat ng tao sa pamilya mo, ikaw mismo, stay healthy. Kasi pag ikaw nang na nawala sa tamang diwa, okay? pag ikaw na medyo naging pasaway, there's no hope for your family. Kaya pag lahat kayo pasaway. Pero kung lahat sila pasaway, tapos ikaw, as a follower of Christ, you stay and you remain healthy, there's hope. Amen? You understand? Okay, so we're going to learn this. How, how do you stay healthy? Well, the best way to stay healthy is to take vitamins. Amen? Sino siya natitake ng vitamins? Oh, kita nyo, di healthy iba rito eh, right? So, we, you know, I'm gonna tell you about spiritual vitamins, okay? The first vitamin na gusto kong dapat natin i-take is yung vitamin D. You know, vitamin D, okay? Maintain discipline. It's vitamin D. Maintain discipline sa spiritual life mo. That's the key. Here's what Paul says in this verse. Sabi niya sa verse 6, For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame. Fan into flame. Okay? Ang picture dito ng, ano, ng spiritual life parang apoy. Okay? Parang, you know, sino sa'yo na pagluto na ng barbecue? O, diba? May uling. Okay? Sa taas, sa taas, sa taas sila. No? Dito, wala. Anong barbecue? Kina, you know, okay, kinakain ko lang. Well, alam naman natin ang uling, di ba? Ang uling, pag hindi mo pinaypayan niya, mamamatay yan. Okay? Kailangan dyan pinapaypayan para magdingas palagi. And spiritually speaking, yung ating walk with the Lord is not something na pwede mo i-autopilot. Are you listening? Hindi pwedeng autopilot sa spiritual life. Hindi yung parang tinanggap mo si Lord, tapos, oh, sige, bale, wala na, okay na, diretso ka na. You cannot do that. Your spiritual life is something na kailangan pinapaypayan palagi. So sabi ni Pablo, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. Now, ano yung gift of God? It could be just the Holy Spirit or may kinalaman sa abilities na kasama doon sa gift of the Holy Spirit. Apparently, si Paul binigyan ni Lord ng kakayanan o kapasidad to do certain things in the kingdom of God bilang parte na kanyang pagsuserve kay Lord. So, included na rin doon yung buong spiritual life niya. So, fan into flame. Okay? Nilayhan siya ni Paul. Tapos sabi ni Paul sa kanya, wag mo pababayaan yan. Now, listen carefully. Some of us think na ang spiritual life is something na tuloy-tuloy lang, mag-maintain lang, even though you're not doing anything. Let, let me give you a, a, a perspective dito. Okay? How many of you have fallen in love? Nang in love ka na, minsan sa buhay mo. Minsan, sa malalapin ang alaka, nang in love ka na. Lord, kawawa naman po ibang mga tao dito. <laughs> Hindi pa po sila na in love. Bihira sa buhay nila. Okay? How many of you are in love right now? <laughs> Yung iba, defensive kay Lord. No, defensive ha? Okay. Now, we all know, paano ba na in love? Siyempre, nag-uumpisa yan sa attraction. Di ba? Nakita mo siya. Nagdaan. O nakatayo. Di ba? Isang tingin yun, na pang mga lawa, pang mga... Oh, sino yon, Di ba? O nagsishooting siya sa basketball, nakashoot. Wow! Alright? It starts with attraction. And then, kung sususuga mo yung attraction na yun, if you start doing certain things, okay, mabibuild yung momentum na yon. Galing sa attraction, magiging strong feelings yun. Di ba? Pag medyo nagpadala ka ng maliit na sulat, hi, hello, di ba? Pag nag-text ka, okay, you know, when you do certain things, mabibuild up yun. And if you keep on de- deposit ka ng deposit, yung feelings mo sa tao na yun, mag-i-increase. After a while, you would say to your friends, I'm in love. You see, it didn't happen just like that. You were doing certain things. At yung ginagawa mo na yon was fueling yung intensity ng uh, emotions mo sa tao na yon. That's how people fall in love. Okay? But actually, love is a commitment. But anyway, that's how it starts. Ikinig po ba kayo? You know bakit nang lalamig minsan ng mga tao sa Panginoon? Because they fail this to, to, to practice this very simple principle. Ang relationship, hindi pwedeng i-autopilot. Lahat ng relationship kailangan, lagay ka ng investment, deposit ka, pangalagaan mo. And it's the same way with your relationship with God. 
Isa yung nangyayari kasi pag medyo pasabay yung mga tao sa pamilya, may apektuhan ka na, di-disappoint ka. So ikaw mismo pinababayaan mo yung spiritual walk mo. And when you try, when you begin to fail to, to, you know, to trust God, to develop your relationship mo sa Kanya, hindi ka na nakikipag-usap kay Lord, hindi ka na nakikinig sa Kanyang Word, wala ka nang ginagawang mga spiritual disciplines, please don't expect, okay, na pag ginawa mo ng ginawa yan, yung pabaya ka ng pabaya, pag ginawa mo ng ginawa, don't expect na mananatili ka pa rin spiritually high. Kasi ang mangyayari talaga sa'yo, unti-unti para manlalabig ka sa Panginoon because you do not fulfill yung part mo which is to continue to fan into flame your spiritual life. So for those of you dito na nangihina kayo, huwag na kayo magtanong, ba't kaya ako nangihina? Ba't kaya ako parang tinatamad sa spiritual life ko? Ba't kaya pag napipreach si pastor, nakakatulog agad ako? Siyempre, hindi pwede sabihin nyo kasi tulog ka ngayon, di ba? Okay. Bakit kaya gano'n parang dating sa ministry parang wala akong gana? Bakit kaya gano'n pagdating sa mga group discussion parang hindi ko... You see, those things are just evidences o katibayan that you are neglecting your spiritual life. Amen? You see, he, walang problema lagi sa Lord kay Lord. Alright? God is always ready to meet with you if you will meet with Him. Draw near to God and He will draw near to you. Ganon ka simple yun. I mean, God is not going to fill you with His presence kung ayaw mo. Di ba? Hindi, hindi pupunta si Lord sa, sa inyo sabi, Anak, pupuspusin kita ng aking presensya. Eh, ayaw mo naman. Sasabihin ni Lord, ayaw mo ha? Pupuspusin kita. Sige. Mm. No, God will not fill you with His presence if you don't want. Seek the Lord. Always. Fan into flame your faith. And that's how you stay healthy. Spiritually. Amen? So in other words, pag ang pamilya mo pasaway, huwag ka makisali. Huwag ka rin maging pasaway. That's not the way to help your family. Amen? Kasi sa mga loob mo, kasi magulang mo, hindi na-appreciate, na-born again ka na. So ang ginagawa mo response ngayon, talagang papakita mo sa kanila, gusto niyo ako maging masama? Hindi niyo gusto na ako born again? Sige, pakikita ko sa kanya, masama ako. Ay, mali. That's not the way to help your family. Amen? Stay healthy. Take vitamin D. Amen ba? Alright. Take vitamin C. That's the next one. Okay? Develop conviction. Kaya kami sa nayayanig, lalo na lang kapag may mga tao sa paligid mo, alam mo naman mga tao sa paligid, may isang di naman nila alam yung moments of disproportionate influence. Di ba? So, minsan, nagkamali ka lang, nagugas ka ng pinggan, tapos na mismo yung isang katiting na butil na yon, na tanging ang nakakakita lang ay yung, yung nagko-commercial ng joy. Yung maliit. Siya lang, siya lang nakakakita nun eh. Ina e mismo. So, yung mga tao sa paligid mo, minsan, matatalim ang salita. Diba? Sasabi na sa'yo, yan ba ang sinasabi mong born again? Di mo lang makita yung dumi. So, ikaw lang parang, anong kinalaman ng pagiging born again? Ito sa dumi. But people can be so harsh. Tama ba yun? Amen? Amen. May mga tao sa paligid na minsan, ang taas ang standard nila sa'yo. Pero sa salili nila, hindi. Pero sa'yo, ang taas ang standard. Okay? And I think that's the reason why a lot of people ayaw nila ng Christianity kasi ayaw nila may nakikialam sa buhay nila. But we know na as followers of Christ, siyempre, pag sinabi mo, ako ay Christian. Whoa! Taas bigla ng standard mo, di ba? So pag nagkamali ka, konting aching mo lang pulmonya na. And, and, and it's so hard to please people. But di, remember this, ang susi dyan is not to argue with them, but to have strong convictions in your life. Ito sabi ni Paul kay Timothy, So do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or of me, His prisoner. Rather, join with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. Now it's true then as it is true now. Pag meron kang kakilala na nasa kulungan, hindi mo abisado pinagmamalaki yun, di ba? I mean, kung may friend ka, o yun, pala yung friend ko nasa munti, no, nandun siya sa no, death row, <laughs> kaibigan ko siya, you know, don't really say that. Okay? So, kahit anong araw, ganun din. It's very easy for people na parang ihiwalay nila sa sarili na kay Paul. Kasi si Paul nasa prison eh, noong mga time na ito. Nakakulong siya. In fact, this is the last letter of Paul. Pagkatapos sa 2 Timothy, he will be beheaded. Okay? You like that? To, to follow Christ? Beheaded? Di ba? Malupit nung araw. If you become a Christian, Pwede ka mamatay. Pag binaptize ka, pwede ka ipakain sa liyon. 
I mean, ngayon yung mga suffering natin, wala na, hindi katiting, wala, hindi pwede i-compare. Diba? Pag sinabi sa akin ng person, pinapersecute ako, bakit? Ayaw akong payagan sa church. Yun lang? Buti nga, hindi ka pinakain sa Leon. So yung persecution ng mga early Christians were life-threatening. So sabi ni Paul kay Timothy, Timothy, huwag ka mahihiya. Instead, makiisa ka sa suffering for the gospel. Na tayo medyo foreign sa atin yan, suffering for the gospel. Okay? I mean, there are many other kinds of suffering sa mundong ito, di ba? Uh, alam ba ko, oh, kuma- pag may birthday party sa kapitbahay mo, oh, nangihiram sila ng karoke, kumakata ng my way, gala stress yun. Suffering yun, di ba? Kanala ko wala sa tono. Amen? But we're talking about suffering because you have certain beliefs. Have you suffered for your beliefs? Has anyone made fun of you because you're a Christian? Dumating na ba sa life mo na because you want to follow Christ, hindi ka lang promote? O tanggal ka sa trabaho? O kaya pinagtawanan ka ng mga kaibigan mo? O hindi ka sila, sinali sa grupo nila? Today, there are people who are suffering in many different ways. Alam niyo ba sa Sudan, which is an Islamic country, just recently, may nabasa akong news, isang babae buntis, pregnant, is on death row. Siya ay bibitayin. At ang kaso niya, very simply because Christian daw siya. Yun ang kaso niya. Okay? Kasi Islamic country yun. So, ina-assume nila na kapag Christian ka, for some reason, nag-convert ka. Actually, itong babae na ito niya nag-convert. Siya ay Christian na talaga sa mga bata. But because of the loss of the land, itong pregnant woman na ito is now scheduled to be executed. Simply because she is a Christian. At itong sabi ng judge sa kanya, if you will renounce Christ, we will set you free. Now think about that. Lagay mo sarili mo doon. Pregnant ka, may baby ka. All you have to do is just renounce Christ. Makakawala ka na. Talk about what a difficult situation. I tell you frankly, ito naging decision niya. Sabi niya sa court, I will not renounce my faith. Now mga kapatid, hopefully di tayo mapunta sa ganun sitwasyon. Amen? It will be very difficult to, to find yourself in a situation na ganun, na, di ba, na parang, I, I remember a story, you know, sa, sa, sa Russia daw during the communist era, kasi nagbago na Russia. Meron daw Christian meeting na nagtatagpo, tagpo sa isang lugar, sa isang bahay. Biglang dumating yung mga, ano, mga, mga police. Okay? At uh, yung, yung, ano, may mga machine gun sila, pagpasok nila sa loob, tatlong, tatlong police pumasok sa Christian meeting. At sabi na, taas ang kamay, taas ang kamay. Okay? Sabi sa kanila, Sino sa inyo rito? Sabi ko ang, ang talagang masugid na tagasunod ni Kristo. Papatayin namin. So, yung grupo na, 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 na wala lahat yung marami, na tira lang iisa. So, sabi niya, ikaw ba masugid ka ba tagasunod ni Kristo? Sabi ng polis. Opo, sabi niya. Sige po, patayin niyo na po ako, sabi niya. Sabay binabaan mga polis yung kanilang banal, sabi nila, Christians din kami Gusto lang namin siguraduhin kung sino talaga totoo sa inyo. <laughs> Naalala ko lang bigla istorya na yun. Okay, let's move on. He has saved us, sabi nga naman, and called us to a holy life. So, nire-remind ni Paul, kay Timothy, kung ano nga bang purpose ni Lord para sa kanya. He has called us to a holy life. Not because of anything we have done, but because of His own purpose and grace. So parang nire-review ni Paul yung gospel. Sabi niya, this grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time. So Paul is giving Timothy a perspective. So sabi niya, Timothy, sa mundong ito, maraming suffering. And if you're a Christian, may suffering. But I want you to see the big picture, sabi ni Paul. Always see it in light of eternity. And then Paul continues, sabi niya, but it has now been revealed. Through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. So sinasabi ni Paul, isn't this what you believed? Di ba ito yung dahilan bakit tayo naging followers ni Christ? Now listen carefully. Every time na ang isang tao is living a life, or he, he claims to be a Christian, pero living a life na hindi consistent sa Christianity, it's not because may problema yung Christianity per se, kundi may problema yung tao na yun sa pagkaunawa niya about the gospel. Whenever na tayo ay tempted 
Nabitawan yung ating faith. Kasi may pressure, kasi may kailangan magtrabaho, or whatever reasons na meron ka. Whenever na parang ipinagpapalit mo yung faith mo for something else sa mundong ito, it's because you have not really fully understood how precious yung faith mo. Kaya ang susi talaga kapag ang buong mundo ay nagiging, you know, nagkakagulo, napapaliwaran at lahat, ang susi sa ating lahat dito, ikaw ako, is to make sure na yung conviction natin is always growing deeper every day. Amen? At para mag-grow yan, ang susi dyan is to understand more and more of who Jesus is at ano ang nire-reveal niya sa atin about His will for our lives. I was talking to a, uh, a few male uh, men leaders ano, sa remix. And sabi nila, Pastor, ano gagawin namin sa mga remix? Hirap na hirap na kami i-gather sila, ganang ganon Sabi ko, you cannot really force them to behave in a Christian way kung malabo sa kanila what it means to be a Christian. You hear that? There's no way na magpa-live out ka o magpa-practice ka ng Christian life, you know, worshiping God, serving God, devoting yourself sa Kanya, praying to God. All of those things, hindi mo magagawa unless you have come to the conclusion that the Christian gospel is true and there's no other thing worth investing your life in except Jesus Christ. Pag wala kang conviction na ganun, anything else can come into your life and you will give up being a Christian. Konting pressure sa mga kaibigan, konting hirap sa buhay, konting trabaho, konting trahedya, konting something na hindi lang nasagot yung prayer mo, o kaya na-disappoint ka, o sinabi mo kay Lord, Lord, pag ginawa mo to, pag, yeah, pag binigay mo sa akin niya, pag sinagot ako niya, talaga promise, talaga maglilikot ako. Tapos hindi nangyari, and you're disappointed with God. You know why you're disappointed? You don't understand. The gospel. Kaya nga pinaka investment, if you want to help another person, tulungan mo siya makaintindi siya ng gospel. I don't mean to say yung mga shortcut na parang, you know, God loves you, has a wonderful plan for your life, may drawing kang ganun, may bangin, tapos natawid ka rito, ha, you know. Yung mga ganun mga na explanation does not build faith. In fact, nauso lang yun sa panahon natin eh. Okay? Kaya yung mga tao, dahil sa maling understanding, tatayo sila sa, bu- sa bus, di ba? Mga kapatid, magsisi kayo, sumunod kayo sa patalangin, hallelujah, offering, offering, offering. So, hindi nila alam, it doesn't work. Ang isang tao does not become a follower of Christ dahil parang fast forward mo lang na ganun. You really have to sit down and say, pag-usapan natin to. Who is Jesus talaga for you? And let us understand this. Kasi if Jesus is Lord, and if He is the Savior of the world, if He died and rose again, then all of life does not mean anything except Jesus. And if I'm convinced sa heart of hearts ko na yun, I can say no to anything and yes to everything because I know that Jesus is Lord. Pag mahina ang paninindigan mo, Konting trial, konting disappointment, konting sama ng loob, konting sin. You just stop following. You know why? Kasi you were following in the wrong way to begin with. Amen? So let me challenge all of you right now. Kamusta kaya? How are you doing with your convictions? Ikaw ba nandito kasi sabi ng nanay mo, punta tayong church. Oh, tamad ako, punta tayo ng church. Pagdating naman sa church, Sabi, wala ka sa loob mo yung church, di ba? Mag-worship ka. Mag-taas mo kami. Mag- ta- <laughs> Atin tayong seminar. Anong seminar yun? Tukol kay Lord. Ayoko na inip ako. Marami akong gagawin sa bahay. May assignment ako, blah, blah, blah. You see, you cannot force people apart from their convictions. Amen? Nakikinig po ba kayo? Alright. Pag tinanong kita, ba't ka nandito? Eh, wala akong magawa eh. Ba't nandito ka sa church na ito? Ba't nandito ka sa, uh, at this time, ba't ka nandito? Eh, baka sabihin niyo, ma-absent ako, hanapin niyo pa ako. You know. What's your reason? And if you tell me the reason bakit ako nandito, is because there is no one else important in my life except Jesus Christ, my Lord, who died for me. And I want to learn His Word 
And I want to offer my life to Him because He is everything for me. Then I know na tama lang na nandito ka. Alright? Kasi kung wala kang ganun, tayo ka lang tayo. Tingin ka lang tingin sa oras mo, tagal lang mo preach itong pastor na to. Okay. Here's what Paul says. And of this gospel, I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher, and that is why I am suffering as I am. You see, what, ano na experience mo ngayon as a follower of Christ? Anong mga situation sa boy mo ngayon that puts you to the test? Kasi in fact, you know, you, we should notice this sa sarili natin. Kung wala tayo na experience na any kind of parang persecution sa mga tao or any kind of insult, baka wala nakakaalam na Christian ka. O kaya, alam niya na Christian ka, pero walang ebidensya. That's why people don't really take you seriously. Kasi pag pinapakinggan nila, nakikisali ka rin naman sa mga green jokes, parehas din naman. Sumasali ka rin naman sa mga, you know, pagkakasaya ng oras, parehas din naman. Sumasali ka rin naman sa mga gawain na masama, parehas din naman. So kahit sa mga Christian ka, they look at you and say, ha, wala yan, mitindihin niya. Reliyoso lang yan. Pero hindi naman talaga totoo. But what are you experiencing right now? You see, if you are experiencing persecution right now sa pamilya mo, if they are saying na para bagang sobra ka na sa ginagawa mo, and make sure na hindi talaga totoo sobra, kundi talagang tama lang. Let's say you are serving God. And dahil doon, minsan, you know, maliban sa Sunday, aatayin ka pa sa small group, okay, may gagawin ka pa. Wala ka namang ginagawa ng sobra. Amen? Na kung dito ka na nakatira, baka sobra na yun. Amen? Baka... Di ba? Hindi ka na umuwi. Hindi ka na naguhugas ng pinggan. Hindi ka na nagwawalis ng bahay. Mali na yun. Amen? Pero yung normal lang. And then people, your family will tell you, ano ba yan? May Sunday church? Tapos mayroon pang iba pang mga bagay? Pwede bang Sunday na lang, umating ka na lang, magsimba ka, tapos tama na yan? You see, the reason why they're saying that is because they're seeing that you are serious about following Christ. Kaya huwag ka magtaka if you're persecuted in that sense. Amen? Okay? Now, ngayon, kung madaling araw, kung makakanta ka ng this is the day, you know, habang tulog lahat ng mga tao, dapat ka lang i-persecute. <laughs> Ang gulo mo eh, di ba? So, kung walang dahilan, kundi you're just normally following the Lord, tapos yung mga tao sa paligid mo, inuusig ka, you're blessed. Amen? That means genuine yung pagsunod mo kay Christ. And here's what Paul says, para sa akin, matindi to, sabi niya. Yet this is no cause for shame, sabi niya. Because I know whom I have believed. And I'm convinced that He is able to guard what I have entrusted to Him until that day. You know, pagkatapos yung isulat ito, He was beheaded. So nung sinabi niya ito na He is able to guard what I have entrusted to Him, what did Paul entrust to Jesus? His whole life. So alam niya, si Lord is going to take care of him. Kahit na mapugutan pa siya ng ulo, he knows the Lord will raise him up again. He is convinced of that. Alam mo, ibig sabihin na to believe something. To believe something means to consider something that is more true rather than not true. At si Paul, nandun siya sa punto na, I believe this is more true than not true. Alam ko na kahit mamatay ako, mapugutan ako ng ulo, I know the Lord will be with me. So kahit tanggalan mo ako ng trabaho, whatever gawin mo sa akin, nothing can separate me from the love of God. Ano ang convictions mo, kapatid? Pag wala ka conviction, tapos yung pamilya mo, nagwawala, pati ikaw, nagwawala na rin, after a while, nawawala na kayong lahat. Stay healthy. Amen? Amen ba? So una, kumain lagi ng vitamin D, tapos uminom lagi araw-araw ng vitamin C. Tapos huwag kalilimutan ng vitamin E. Vitamin E is focus on equipping. Now this is so important, I want to tell you this. Here's what Paul says. What you heard from me, keep us the pattern of sound teaching with faith and love in Christ Jesus. In other words, the reason bakit tinuturuan ka ng Panginoon is so that you can pass it on to others. Amen? Hello? I, I was reading a book, no? Ang pangalan ng book ay Wiki Church. Yun yung storya ng Victory. And it was written by Steve Morell, yung founder ng Victory. And he was telling doon sa kanyang storya na yun, habang binabasa ko nga, one of the things that naging parang prinsipyo na nila when they started Victory, and Victory is a very large church, well, no, di ba? 
Amen? Sino matindo ngayon? Okay, let's just move on. So, uh, Victory is, is a very famous church right now. Pero nung nag-start sila, maliit lang sila. At ito yung prinsipyo nila. Sa tuwing nagtuturo daw sila sa isang tao, ang mindset nila was laging, tinuturuan kita kasi aalis na ako, ikaw na dapat magpatuloy. That's how they ministered. From the very beginning, they always led with the view of living. Lead, live. In other words, pag sila may dinidisciple, lagi sila sabi, oh, in a few days, aalis na ako, ha? bahala ka na. So, minsan sasabihin nila sa isang tao, uy, paki-disciple mo nga si ganito. Ang sabihin ng tao, eh, tatlong araw pa lang ako born again. Sabihin niya, sasabihin ng leader, okay lang yun, tatlong minuto pa lang siyang born again. Ikaw, tatlong araw, mas lamang ka. <laughs> And that was their philosophy, you know? And I was impressed. I was, you know, doing this, habang nagbabasa ako, parang, oh, wow. Okay? So, you see, as a disciple, as a follower of Christ, ang pinaka-importante sa lahat ay yung natutunan mo ay hindi mo lang basta nilalagay dyan para sa sarilong pakinabang. Yung mga natututunan mo, dapat pinapasa mo sa iba. And can I tell you something that's very, very important? Okay? It's the idea of a faith line. Sabihin nyo nga po, faith line. Faith line. Na merong fault line. Ano yung fault line? Pag may, pag may earthquake, lulubog ka sa ilalim. Fault line. Okay? Ano yung flat line? Oh, pinadala ka sa ICU, na dedo ka, flat line. Okay? But there's such a thing as a fault, so, fo, faith line. Or in other words, a line of faith. What does that mean? It means na merong may certain direction ang faith. And you can pass it on to others. Now, si Timothy, si Timothy, naka-experience siya ng faith line. Nang galing sa, na, sa lola niya, si Luis. Napunta sa nanay niya, si Eunice. Tapos napunta na sa kanya. Alright? And, and Paul wanted to teach Timothy na the best way talaga para to stay healthy is to always focus on passing on your faith to the next line. Now, mahirap talaga mag-build ng faith line pataas. Ibig sabihin, ako, nanay ko, tatay ko, mahirap. Okay? Hindi imposible, mahirap lang. Amen? Pag sinayang mo sa tatay mo, Dad, tay, you know, narinig mo na ba yung alituntunan yung spiritual o whatever yung sabihin mo, di ba? Anong pinaglululoko mo? Pinaglululoko mo nga ba ako? Di ba? Sabihin sa tatay mo, di ba? Magugas ka nga na pinggan, you know? So, minsan mahirap mag-share sa mga tatay, di ba? Uh, sideways, Pwede, pero struggle din. Diba? Pag sabi sa kapatid mo, uy, alam mo, kailangan tanggapin mo si Kristo. Bakit? Diba? Kasi kilala ka niya, eh, di ba? Ikaw yung mga nagtatago na kanyang cellphone, gano, yung mga ginagawa ko nung araw. So, oh, hirap, di ba? So, saan mo pwede i-build yung faith line? Well, listen, listen. It's going down. It's going down from you. That's why kapag ang pamilya, mama, yung lolo ng lolo mo, panahon ni Magellan, you know, babaero yun. Tapos yung, yung lolo ng lolo mo, babaero din. Tapos yung babaero, babaero. Tapos yung tatay mo, babaero. Okay, lahat sila, bumbero, uh, barbero, whatever. Okay. Pagdating sa'yo, malamang itutuloy mo rin yung maliban nila kung isi-save ka ni Lord. Pag sinave ka ni Lord, a new faith line is established. Okay? That's why kayo mga kabataan dito, yung mga may asawa na, sorry ha, di na kayo kasali dito. Hindi, joke lang. Sali pa rin kayo. Dito muna ako sa mga bata. Mga kabataan, ang, ang isa sa pinaka-importante yung desisyon pagkatapos mo tagapin si Kristo ay sino mo papangasawa mo. Okay? Kayo mga babae, huwag kayo sagot ng sagot porkit pogi. At kayo naman mga lalaki, huwag kayo ligaw ng ligaw just because maganda. Hanapin nyo yung tao who is Christ-centered and focus on the kingdom of God kasi pag yan na ang napangasawa mo na yan, dalawa kayo will start a new faith line. That will save your family. Now, doon sa mga tatanda, Pastor, paano naman kami? Yung mga anak namin, wala nang pag-asa. Hindi. May pag-asa po yan. Kung mga anak nyo, bata pa, now is the time. Amen? Kung bata pa, mga anak nyo, now is the time. Huwag kayong sobrang focus sa trabaho, abroad ng abroad. Yung anak nyo, lumalaki, bisaya na. You know, focus kayo sa mga anak nyo. Kaon na ta, sabi ng anak mo. Saan mo nakuha yan? Dito sa balay. Okay. Joke. Now, sorry, mga viewers natin na bisaya. Joke lang. Okay. Now, kung malalaki na yung anak mo, that's a challenge. Okay? But what you can, you can still try. Kung may man miss out ka naman ng mga tao na lumipas, don't give up. Kasi maybe yung anak mo will start a new line. di ba? So, sabi ni Paul, guard the good deposit that was entrusted to you. Guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit who lives in us. Okay? Manatili ka sa Panginoon, stay healthy, grow in your knowledge of God. And then sabi niya, you then, my son, 
Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. In the things you, heard, you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses, and trust to reliable people, okay, who will also be qualified to teach others. So para maging healthy ka, always pass on your faith to other people. In fact, noong nagbimiting ako sa mga leaders ng Remix, you know, uh, I was telling them na may pinagawa ako sa kanila, and they did it, you know, praise God, one tuwa ako. Sabi sa sarili ko, wow, may pag-asa Remix, hallelujah, amen. So, ginawa nila yon. Tapos, alam mo, testimony ng bawat isa sa kanila, when we had our LG meeting, sa na, Pastor, di ko maintindihan. When I started ministering to people, when I started helping yung mga kalalakihan sa kanilang faith, it helped me. Na-build up yung faith ko, sabi niya. Mas nagkaroon ako ng init sa Panginoon as I was helping others. Listen! To stay healthy spiritually, you must always think of other people rather than yourself. In fact, kung naiimo ka ngayon, parang maiimo ko. Mag, mag-minister ka sa ibang tao, yung imo mo lilipad. Kasi mahirap mag-minister na habang nag ka. Ano bang problema mo? <laughs> Bakit? Ba't ka ba ganyan? Baka matay ka na yun. You, you cannot really minister unless you can get out of that emo feeling and say, oh sige, pakikinga ko itong taong ito. And when you get out of yourself, the grace of God works in your life. And you begin to experience spiritual health. Okay. Stay spiritually healthy regardless of your family. Amen? Kahit ano pang ginagawa niya, pasaway ang tatay mo, pasaway ang nanay mo, pasaway ang mga kapatid mo, pasaway ang aso niyo. Pati mga daga nyo, pasaway, you know. Don't worry. Don't focus on them. Focus on yourself. Stay healthy. Amen? Lagi mag-take ng vitamin D, discipline, vitamin C, conviction, vitamin E, equipping. Stay healthy. Huwag masakitin sa Christian life. Would you just stand up right now? Sabi mo nga sa katayo mo, kamusta ka na spiritually? O, sagutin mo. Ito, may pulmonya. Ganun. Sabi mo, sagutin mo. Ganun. Ito, healthy naman. Ganun, ito, parang may TB yata ako sa spiritual ko. Okay. Iba sa inyo, nilalagnat. Spiritually speaking. Iba sa inyo, anemic. Iba sa inyo, may insomnia spiritually. Meron bang ganon? Insomnia spiritually. Iba sa inyo, merong LVM spiritually. Nagkakalat kayo sa, sa lahat ng lugar. Nababahuan kami lahat. But stay healthy. Amen? Sayo mo sa katabi mo, kapatid, stay healthy. Ulitin mo let's stay healthy, kapatid. At sabihin mo sa kanya, mukha ka ng healthy physically, kailangan na lang spiritually. At sabihin ka sa chan niya, sabihin mo, mukhang healthy ka spiritually, pero kailangan mo spiritual health. Okay. Bawas-bawasan natin ang mga sisig. Focus tayo, spiritual health. Okay? Sige, get a partner right now. Get a partner, sa mo, kapatid. Get a partner, husband and wife, or whatever. Friend, partner kayo. Say mo, kapatid, tulungan mo ako to be healthy spiritually. I-remind mo ako kapag nakikita mo na nagiging pabaya ako. I-remind mo ako pag nagiging pasaway ako. Pag hindi ako nakikinig, Batukan mo ako. Dek, huwag ganoon. <laughs> Joke lang. I-remind mo ako, sabi mo ganoon. Masagutin nyo naman. Mayingi na tulong sa inyo yung partner niya eh. Sabi mo, okay. Sabi mo, okay. Okay. Surrender and dedicate all of your life to the Lord. Follow Him with sincerity of heart. Katulad ni Timothy. Let's sing this song.